Published 1132 Eastern Standard Time, the 6th of March 2019. Updated 1213 Eastern Standard Time, the 6th of March 2019. Anthony Darnell McClanahan, a former professional football player accused of stabbing his wife to death in November 2017, was ordered to stand trial for murder during a court hearing in Park City, Utah. On Tuesday, a former professional football player accused of stabbing his wife so many times he nearly decapitated her appeared to fake a seizure when cops arrived at the scene of the brutal November 2017 slaying it has been revealed in court. A preliminary hearing was held Tuesday in Park City, Utah, for 47-year-old Anthony Darnell McClanahan, who is charged with the first-degree murder of Carrie K.C. McClanahan, 28. During the hearing, three officers, who responded to the murder scene at the Park Regency Condominium on November 2, 2017, testified that they found Anthony McClanahan outside the building with blood on his face and hands, appearing to convulse. I thought he was trying to fake a seizure, Park City Police LT Vifo Lila Tafia said on the stand, according to the Deseret News. Officer Franco Libertini said McClanahan may have been in shock from the trauma he claimed had just occurred. The officers testified that McClanahan told them two white men in black jackets had attacked him and his wife, but he would not answer their direct questions. A trail of blood behind McClanahan led them to a room where the couple was staying. Inside, they found Casey McClanahan lying in a pool of blood with a gash in her throat. McClanahan, 47, allegedly stabbed 28-year-old Carrie, Casey, McClanahan, above, together, in the neck so many times she was almost decapitated on November 2, 2017. He then crawled out of the Park City condominium they were staying at and flagged down a police officer McClanahan started his football career as a linebacker for Washington State University and was signed to the, the Dallas Cowboys 1993, but was dropped before the season began. He went on to play for the Canadian Football League. He is pictured in 2007 carpet burns and defensive wounds indicated that Casey McClanahan had put up a significant struggle before her death, according to charging documents. The murder weapon, a small, sharp knife sheet worn sheet in a nylon paracord bracelet, was found in the room, along with a set of six steak knives, according to the officers. In a police interview after his wife's death, McClanahan claimed that two or more intruders had come into their condo and held him down, made him cut himself and attacked his wife. However, investigators determined that the only DNA in the room belonged to the couple, prosecutors argued on Tuesday. They also stressed that surveillance footage from the hotel doesn't show anyone matching his description of the men. During Tuesday's hearing, three officers who responded to the murder scene testified that they found Anthony McClanahan outside the building with blood on his face and hands, appearing to convulse. I thought he was trying to fake a seizure, Park City Police LT Bifo Ali Tafia left, said on the stand. Officer Franco Libertini, right, said McClanahan may have been in shock from the trauma he claimed had just occurred. McClanahan told Paulus that two or more intruders had come into their condo, above, and held him down, made him cut himself and attacked his wife. However, investigators determined that the only DNA at the scene belonged to the couple. Carpet burns and defensive wounds indicated that Casey McClanahan had put up a significant struggle before her death, according to charging documents. The victim's sister, Heather Goff, said she had gone to Park City to tell her husband she was filing for divorce. Yamsi Clanahan's former cellmate at the Salt Lake County Jail, Michael Bell, testified on Tuesday that the one-time NFL hopeful had originally told him that two strangers killed his wife but later admitted that he'd done it himself. Bell said one night when another inmate was yelling, McClanahan got annoyed and threatened to cut the man's throat, like I cut that expletive's throat, using a derogatory term toward women. McClanahan later revealed he had stabbed his wife 16 to 20 times using the paracord knife she carried because he thought that she was messing around with his family friend, the former cellmate testified. McClanahan's former cellmate at the Salt Lake County Jail, Michael Bell, testified on Tuesday that the defendant was frustrated with his wife, above, and thought she was cheating on him. Bell said McClanahan suspected that his wife was partying and doing drugs because she had appeared thinner, and that he was frustrated with her because she had borrowed money from his father to pay bills but used it for something else. McClanahan also allegedly told Bell that he planned to use his history of concussions to make it look like he had all these memory problems, Bell claimed. He recalled one night when his cellmate ordered him to tell jail employees that he'd had an episode.
At the time he shared his cell with McClanahan, Bell was in jail for giving an officer his brother's name during a traffic stop while he was on probation for an aggravated robbery conviction. He testified on Tuesday that he had not been given a reduced sentence or had any charges dropped in exchange for feeding information to detectives. Judge Patrick Corum ruled that there was enough evidence for the case to advance even without Bell's testimony and ordered McClanahan to stand trial for murder. Clearly, without question, this was a homicide, and there is a reasonable inference Mr. McClanahan was the one who committed it, the judge said. McClanahan's defense filed a claim of diminished mental capacity last fall, arguing that he sustained brain damage during his years as a linebacker. He's seen right in this file photo after Tuesday's hearing, KC McClanahan's older sister Heather Goff said she had plans to join the Air Force and went to Park City to tell her husband she'd be filing for divorce. She was just trying to help and do what's right, and she paid the ultimate price for it, Goff told the Deseret News. McClanahan's defense filed a claim of diminished mental capacity last fall, arguing that he sustained brain damage during his years as a linebacker at Washington State University and in the Canadian Football League in the 1990s. He also practiced for the Dallas Cowboys in 1993. The suspect has pleaded not guilty to a separate charge of kidnapping said he took his eight-year-old son from a previous relationship from his school in Arizona in October 2017 and traveled with him through Nevada and Utah. McClanahan is scheduled to be arraigned in court on March 18. Free and confidential help and support for victims and survivors of domestic violence is available 24-7 at 1-800-897-LINK-5465 or by visiting udvc.org.